This is day four of an extended weekend camping trip for me out at Jordan Lake State Recreation Area just outside of Raleigh, North Carolina. Can you believe this campsite? And it's something like $25 a night. And it's campsites like these that put this in my head. This is the Gazelle T4 Plus. And it's one of those products that as soon as I discovered it, it was an obsession with me. I could not wait to get it. And this is why. Look at that view from my queen size bed. It is a tent in the back and a screen room in the front. And you have protection from the elements, protection from the bugs, but you can have this nice view of wherever you are. And yeah, I just decided I needed to grab my camera and get this done. I didn't make my bed yet. I still have other camera stuff up. My, my place is a mess. It's not just a mess. I got blueberry pancakes cooking right now. And that's actually, I just like, I've got to get my camera and I've got to get this site on video right now. This is why a tent like this can become an obsession until you get it. And it's pretty much an obsession of mine now because I can't wait to come back here. I have to leave here today. But wait until you see the conditions that I was able to test this tent under on these four days. And these bands of pine needles foreshadow what I'm about to show you. Well, thank goodness for that bathtub floor because my entire campsite is flooded. There's water running right through it and the tent is dry. But as I got out and I was running into the car, I was running through puddles. Holy cow, that's like an inch of water too. Unbelievable, great tent. First thing I wanna do is show you this awesome bag. It's very heavy duty, very high quality, and it has to be because this is the way I have it set up over 60 pounds, I think. And I say the way I have it set up because there's more than just a tent in there. The first thing to keep in mind is that they make this thing oversized. They know nobody can pack a tent up as tightly as the factory does it. So they don't give you this stuff sack that's almost impossible to get the tent back in. They give you this gigantic stuff sack that has plenty of room left over even after you do your amateur job of wrapping up the tent, which I've done. It has very beefy handles, one that's crosswise in the front, and then it has two in the back here, and then it has built-in compression straps front and back, and I'm actually gonna open these up. These aren't just to keep everything stable but you cinch those down to help protect the zipper because you don't want everything stretching and putting pressure on the zipper. Very nicely padded shoulder strap. I will tell you, even with the padding though, you're not gonna wanna carry this very far just on your shoulder. But look how much room there still is inside of this. And I have more than the tent and fly in there. I have <laughs> a welcome mat. I have a cheapy tarp for a footprint. It's very big. And I actually have to fold over uh, side of it to make sure that it's tucked underneath the tent. I have a throw rug for the screen room. I have an inflatable lounger. This thing, it's crazy. This, I wish I had one of these way sooner because this is one of the most comfortable uses of $30 I think I've ever spent. I have a hammock and extra long straps. I have a pillow for the hammock. And then in addition to the tent stakes that come with this, which are actually garbage, I have really heavy duty tent stakes in this box. And there's room for even more stuff if I wanted to, but that I think right there, that sums up the way Gazelle Tents thinks about how people use tents in general, how people are gonna use their tents. 
they are one step ahead of us and they give us flexibility to do very practical things beyond just try to stuff the tent and the fly back in when you're done. I don't care how tough your tent floor is, you really should put a waterproof ground sheet down under it first. It'll help to protect your tent floor from getting abraded and poked by stuff. After choosing the placement and orientation for the T4 Plus, I policed the site for pine cones, sticks, and sharp rocks, and I smoothed out a few high spots in the gravel. Gazelle sells a footprint for this tent, but they charge $90 for it. Instead, I spent $25 on this 10 mil thick tarp in a very standard 9 foot by 12 foot size. While the hub design means the T4 Plus goes from flat to freestanding relatively quickly, you're still going to spend about 20 minutes or so getting the tent out of the bag, oriented in the right direction, popped open, fly installed, tent staked, and walls and fly guide out. Then you might spend another 5 minutes rolling up windows and doors. I do love how easy it is for one person to deploy this tent alone, and that can not be said about most tents this size even if they are so-called pop-up tents. Obviously the time it takes to set up the T4 Plus will be less if you have someone helping you. However, one person or two do not be lulled into thinking this or any hub tent will somehow instantly be up and ready for use. So these are the poles you're looking for but on these screen sides they can actually get pulled through the screen wall and you can feed it through that grommet, but I just find it easier to open that up and just grab it from underneath. I already mentioned staking out the tent. No matter what the forecast is, never set up a tent or a canopy without staking it down. The stakes included with the T4 Plus are hard to drive into packed dirt like this, and they bend way too easily to be worth using. So I got a set of heavy duty stakes. If you stake out all spots on the tent and guy out every wall, that's 12 stakes. You might want another four stakes to guy out the fly if you want the best ventilation combined with full rain protection. Just find it easier to fold the window over and start your roll overhand. So you get about there and then I flip it underneath for a cleaner look. And again, less of a chance of creating a pocket that, that moisture is gonna collect in. Could be rain, could be just dew in the morning. So the tent is freestanding from the, the hubs, but the doorway needs to be stiffened. And you're given three sets of shock corded poles, two are for the size and one is to go across. You don't need to worry about length. You just look at these connectors, which one of these is not like the other. That's gonna be across the top. And these are the sides. Start at the bottom. You have to pull the floor away. And then right in there, there's that pull tab. And that's where this is gonna go, right in there. Whew, that worked. And then you have a matching tab up here. And then you have Velcro in the middle. So now this side. Okay, and now across the top. Got one right there. Another one right here. And then you have this strap in the middle. Okay, 
Now I'm going to go back out and finish staking the floor out before I put the fly on top. Ooh, I am going to open the windows before I do anything else. A lot of people just open them and let that hang down like that. That's not a big deal. That's fine. But Gazelle is smarter than that. You can roll these up. Get them out of your way and tucked into its own pouch. It has a pouch this deep for each window. Oh, that makes such a big difference with the breeze. Oh, one more thing before I step outside with this door, the way this is made, it's basically two tents sewn together. But this divider wall right here is actually the same material as the walls of the tent out here. And it is waterproof on this side. This is the outside of this tent. And I think that's very clever. So you can actually have everything open here and maybe rain bouncing in and getting stuff wet here. It might be a, a squall coming through or something. And you can zip this up, zip up all your windows and be perfectly dry because these walls you have to go outside maybe into the rain to pull down but i think that's another clever thing that, Giz that gazelle did in designing this is in how they chose to run the fabric for me the best way to do these kinds of knots is to just overhand overhand again just twice and it just is a friction Thing, just like that so it's just over twice the same the same way and that gets you some nice friction and we can tuck these up so I have one side done and now I'm gonna go across the front you don't want these over tight you're just getting them snug there can be actually a little slack after you drive the the stake in that's fine and then this actually has a stake for the door that you just want kind of you don't want it tight you just want it straight down and that's so you can zip open the door and you want to make sure you can find a place that you're going to be able to drive this stake all the way flush with the ground That way you're not going to be tripping over it. And now it holds it down. This whole left door doesn't open once you do that. You're going to end up opening just the right door to get in and out. But that's a lot better than leaving it loose. So Gazelle does sell their own custom footprint for their tents. But they're like $80, $90. And this thing I think was $20. It's way more durable, it's thicker, it's going to be more waterproof, and I'm not going to be worried about putting a hole in it because it's going to be super easy to patch with like duct tape. And then if I trash it, it's just another $20, plus I'll still have this kind of general purpose tarp to use for different things. But what you don't want is it sticking out the side like this, so I'm going to fold it up underneath now that I know what this side is going to be like because otherwise what will happen is that the rain will come down hit that tarp and then go underneath your tent you should never be able to see your footprint your ground tarp sticking out from underneath your tent I'm going to do this other back corner Last but not least, the last side stake. Now we're going to put the fly on, but before we do that, we got to pop the roofs down. Got these pull handles. <laughs> One of the things to keep in mind is these are under a lot of tension, which is why you do these last to go up. 
and when you pull them down they kind of snap pretty hard so you want to make sure you're out of the way as you pull it down just like that that's going to hit you in the face or the head <laughs> ask me how i know so when putting the fly on you want to make sure you're not dragging it over that sharp edge and you need to start by looking at one of the gazelle heads and you're going to look underneath it for that hook that's the back the front doesn't have this and you'll see what i mean but i kind of loop it in the middle oh it's coming off gonna redo that in a second but you get the idea and then i take it and spread it out this way that way i'm not scraping it on the metal mounts because that would be bad the fly has a short pole at every corner that inserts into the frame of the tent. And like all of the poles in the T4 Plus, they're designed to be user replaceable. Gazelle offers a one year warranty on their products, but nobody wants to spend hundreds of dollars on a tent that will be trash if the poles break, whether or not it happens in the warranty period. That's another difference between Gazelle hub tents and many cheaper pop-up tents from other brands. For power, I just pulled a little bit of the wall away here and I'm gonna run the mail plug through that space right there be easier with two people of course and I'll get that from the other side let me quick show you I'm gonna have that going over here to my refrigerator and a splitter and I'm gonna be able to run my rope lights off of it too Okay, there it is. I'm gonna just pull it around this way so it's out of the way. I can keep my bed plugged in. Okay, and now the refrigerator should be powering up on its own. And this way, this is out of the rain, out of the weather. And if I wanted to charge it up, I could pull it out and I could run down to where there's sun. With solar, I might do that tomorrow if I have some sun but I'm not so sure I am. This door is actually really smart too. In order to seal it up from the rain, it has a rain guard, a zipper guard, but you see that the zipper guard actually switches the way it lies halfway down. So many tents, they have the, the zipper guard just coming off of one side and then when it loops around, it actually catches rain. It's idiotic but not Gazelle. They have their thinking caps on when they design these things. And so the zipper guard is actually on the tent to here, and then it's on the door panel the rest of the way. And that way, no matter where the rain is hitting on this door, it's gonna have a path to go over and past the zipper and not get in your tent. Some people complain about how hard this is to get in and out, and I'm not gonna deny that it's a little tight, but this is a hub tent. This is a compromise with the design, not a flaw. You have poles coming like this and like this. So this is actually a very large and efficient use of that space for an opening. And you just zip this open and then find the right zipper for the screen. And then yes, you do need to step over to get in. There's no question that that is not convenient, but that is a function of the design of the hub tent. You're not gonna get a better door than this. You're not gonna get a bigger opening and still have the tent as easy to put up as it is. I've been here a couple days and I have things dialed in. So let's do a tour. So the first thing you're gonna notice is this welcome mat to wipe your feet. And what I really like about this is it's kind of a continuous filament, I think. And so it's very spongy. It's all synthetic, but it's abrasive enough to scrape stuff off the bottom of your feet without it being super scratchy. And it holds a lot of water. I have it over top of that stake to make it less likely that I'll trip on it. So wipe my feet 
unzip the zipper and then I just slide in the crack. Don't actually unvelcro it at the bottom and then close the zipper behind me and it just needs to tuck in behind the floor right there. Take my shoes off and then I am on this nice synthetic mat that is not quite the size of the floor. But it being synthetic means that if it gets wet, which it does from rain coming in the side, it's not gonna soak it up, it's not gonna smell, it dries very quickly, it cleans very quickly. This actually has two sides, it's double-sided. I just have the lighter side up. And then it protects the floor from the bottom of your shoes. I could have my folding chair here and I wouldn't have to worry about the feet digging into the floor of the tent. On this side, I've got my inflatable lounger and I love this thing. This is so comfortable and I'll have it kind of like that when I'm sitting in it sometimes if I'm really spread out, I'll turn it diagonally that way. And then I keep this open all the time and there is my queen size bed. It's from Intex. I think it's 20 inches high and it's the premier level so it's a little more expensive but it's very very comfortable i have it slid mostly to the side and then i just use the little bit of room that's right there that's my hamper <laughs> don't look there and then i've got a couple pillows they actually have the wrong sheets on them those are darker sheets i grabbed the the wrong pillowcases and on this side, I have my power station. It's charging the battery for that fan. I like that because I can put it anywhere I want to and get good fan action out of it. I've got a folding table here. I threw a blanket over top of it just to be fancy, but that doubles as an extra blanket if it were to get unexpectedly cold. It, it did not, it will not. And then I have this here so I could plug different things in. Mostly I'm running off of USB power and you can see I've got these fairy lights running around up top. The excess is in the gear hammock which I have folded over on itself. And in the side, I've got my headlamp that I can grab if I need it. And then that is my view. That is insane. And can you believe this tent site I think is $25 a night now but that's what I wake up to I sleep like this all night I keep the windows open like this this is actually open just a little bit more I was changing and I didn't want people walking on the road to see me so I had to get a little bit more privacy and this is fantastic I absolutely love this tent as beautiful as the weather looks here, the T4 Plus got challenged three different times by heavy rain, including one night where the entire campsite flooded. <laughs> it is pouring. You can certainly hear it. My campsite is flooded. And I'll tell you what, that bathtub floor is doing great. Uh, I just have a little spell in between bouts of lightning. I was retreated to my truck because, I mean, it is life-threatening electrical activity. <laughs> Look at this. The water is higher in the side of the wall but it's not higher than where the floor goes i'm actually gonna try to channel some of this away before i go in there but look at that and you'll see it's gonna be bone dry in there that's awesome look at that the floor is totally dry oh my gosh <laughs> Look how high that comes up. That is unbelievable. 
Yeah, you, you can see the shine of my headlights in the flooded waters right there. It's hard to see through screen. Not only is the floor dry, except where I stepped on it, but I could actually feel water underneath the tent. And that bathtub floor is keeping it dry. That's, yeah, there's water right underneath there. It's like stepping on a waterbed. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I had no idea that it was gonna be this thorough of a test of this tent. Look at the walls, look at it. <laughs> Glad I have it well staked down. <laughs> look at that view. The night started out really crazy. And then all the weather went away. And then I got a beautiful shot of the moon setting it was actually red like the sun. It didn't come across on the photo quite as well as you can see with your eyes. But it was really beautiful. And right here, this view, and many like it, are why I wanted to get this tent, the T4 Plus, with the, the tent bedroom like I'm in, and a screen room in the front. And a big opening so I can lie in bed and look out at this lake when I camp. <laughs> it is just so awesome. This is the tent that I was dreaming of getting for, a, for months. For months. It was out of stock for months. And it's probably out of stock as you're watching this video. And I, it is delivered in spades it's protected me from the rain it's provided me with bug protection with shade and it gives me this amazing view there are a couple ways you can do the fly the most basic way is to use the elastic bungees onto the same stakes that you use to stake out the sides now if you don't stake out the sides, you can't complain if they get pushed in by the wind because anything that provides enough force to that's equivalent to your hand pushing in the wall to collapse it is going to collapse the wall. It's not going to be so much of an issue where there's a screen and I have really only one unscreened wall that's unstaked. But miraculously, I didn't have any issues with that, even though it got really, really windy. I think all the other walls are staked out. On this side, I've got the fly up more like an awning. And that's a, that's a kayak in there. I don't know if I'm ever going to get around to inflating it because it's just a relaxing kind of trip for me versus one where I want to do the work of getting that boat together go out paddling and then dry it off and everything else. So that might just sit there for the time being. And then I got my fishing stuff under there. There's one other way that you can do these flies. For extra ventilation, you can roll up the flies on the sides and that will give you protection from stuff dropping straight down into the screen roof of the T4 Plus. And it also gives you shade, which is something you might want on a warmer day like today. Plus, it's very quick to deploy the side fly down because I have everything set up to pull it down. And I actually did that yesterday for added ventilation. When I wasn't in the tent, I had it like this. It started to rain. I was able to run over here and pull it down and I didn't get any rain going in the open windows. Of course, you can actually close up all of the windows and the walls of the screen room and then the fly isn't going to necessarily add a lot of extra protection because everything will be sealed off for me that fly the best benefit is to create a place to put something like firewood and that all stayed dry except for the bottom pieces where it got flooded it allows me to have rain protection when i have the screens open just the way they are for my last night here 
it was perfectly clear. So I was able to take the fly completely off to get great ventilation. And one of the things that it's actually not surprising when you think about it, these are screens, they are see-through, but it's a bit like looking through light sunglasses. You know, they're, you don't see the screen so much as you notice that there is a tint to what you see. And so when you're lying down in your bed and you're looking up and you're trying to see stars, you'll see the brightest ones, but you're not gonna see every star that you're gonna be able to see with your naked eye. It still is super airy, super refreshing. And this is the way I'm gonna use it anytime it's warm enough and I don't have to worry about rain. Before I pack this up, I did want to show you what it's like with the front doors open. And I can get away with it right now because it's a nice breeze and so it's not so buggy. And you can see I can have a folding tent here along with my inflatable lounger if you wanted to do that. Oh, this tent is so freaking cool. I did have to pull the stake right here in order to roll this door up. You kind of have to decide ahead of time or you're gonna be dealing with putting the stake down or pulling the stake up going between the, the two things. That's if you want the zipper to open and close with one hand. That's why you, you need the stake in order to be able to do that. But man, this thing is so cool. It's everything that I dreamt it was gonna be. As I'm taking down the T4 Plus, I wanted to show you an easy way to pull stakes that just don't want to let go of the dirt. You simply tie a loop from a few feet of paracord, wrap it around the head of the stake on one end, and an improvised handle on the other. I'm using a small piece of firewood as my handle. Twist the loop a bunch of times so it hugs the stake, then pull with your legs and not your back. If you can't deadlift the stake using this easy method, you'll never get that stake out of the ground with a store-bought stake pull. So on these stakes, you want to make sure that you get it all the way around and these things are turned sideways. These things are just friction fit on the stake itself so you could twist them around and you want it to be sideways like that. And then when you twist the line, it'll help to hold it tight. And what you want to do is you're not pulling straight up, you're kind of pulling a little bit away so that you help keep that pressure on the line itself. As I'm packing up, I do wanna point out one of the drawbacks of this Velcro floor. This is the way the factory did it, not me. You can see it puckers in some places, it creates gaps. And uh, I found a bunch of crickets underneath my shoes. And those are basically basement dwellers. These are ground crickets that crawl into things. They get into your home the same way that they got into this tent by finding a crack and crawling in. They didn't hop through an open door. They came in probably right there, and especially with all the rain we had. They saw this as a dry place. It's not such a big deal when it's crickets, but if you're in a place where there's like scorpions or uh, spiders that are, are venomous or something like that, uh, it might be a bigger issue for you. You can go around and do a better job of attaching the Velcro to the walls of the tent, and you might not have this kind of an issue. Um, I'm not worried about it. I don't have stuff like scorpions to worry about, but if you do, keep it in mind that if there's a gap in the Velcro between the floor and the wall, stuff will find its way inside of your tent. Before collapsing any tent, I do like to unfurl all the window flaps to make sure there's no moisture trapped in them. That also helps the tent to collapse up a little smaller as a big floppy piece of fabric is easier to fold than one that is tightly rolled and tied. The hubs make the rest of the job easy and fast. After collapsing all of the walls, the T4 Plus naturally folds in half, and then all that's left is gathering the spokes into one long end fluffy bundle. I likewise gather the fly with all its poles oriented the same way, and then lay the fly and the 
collapsed tent door poles all into one bundle. Gazelle supplies a compression strap to cinch it all together, so I hope you didn't misplace that. As I already showed you, the bag is large enough to not only accommodate my less than perfect wrapping of the tent and fly, but also much of the related gear that I'll always have with me when tent camping. This was the first tent that I bought in 26 years because my OG Sierra Design Meteor Light is still going strong. I waited so long for the T4 Plus to come back in stock because I wanted a big car camping tent that was going to serve me as well as my Meteor Light has all those years. If you're interested in getting a T4 Plus or any Gazelle product for yourself, please use the link in the video description to place your order. It supports the channel when you do. Be sure to subscribe for more car camping videos featuring the T4 Plus and other great gear. I really appreciate you watching the Tech of Tech, and I hope to see you next time.